Hi, this is Sabin Bhartia and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Dave Van Everen, uh, SVP of Marketing at Mirantis. Dave, uh, welcome to the show once again. Hi, Swapnil. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, today, uh, Mirantis is announcing a Docker Enterprise Edition T.1, if I'm not wrong. That's correct. Yeah, Docker Enterprise 3.1. Uh, it's generally available today. Uh, we're really excited about this release. Tell us a bit about what, what some of the new features or highlights of this release. So this is the first release where Mirantis has produced a Docker Enterprise release. Uh, so it's a significant milestone for the company. And the features that we're including in this release are uh, Kubernetes 1.17 with all of the uh, GA features included in that release of Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes on Windows and being able to run mixed clusters, uh, Istio as an ingress, and support for NVIDIA GPUs. Yeah, and you, you're also offering support for GPU, uh, which I am thinking that, if I'm not wrong, is more about machine learning kind of workloads. Can you talk about that? Why GPU inclusion and what kind of feedback you received from the community that you wanted to include it? GPU-based hardware is emerging as a very attractive choice for specific workloads, primarily around machine learning, AI, IoT, uh, those types of things where uh, it's very data intensive and processing intensive. As a result, uh, adding GPU support was a natural extension of our Kubernetes capabilities. We feel that this is going to help us grow the number of deployments that we can support for our customers and support additional use cases as well. Uh, the way that we accomplished that was through a plugin for NVIDIA GPUs, and we provide through our universal control plane a way for users to establish policies around how those GPUs are utilized by the users. Kubernetes 1.18 was also released last week, so uh, why <laughs> 17 and not 18? We release our Kubernetes versions after we've done a significant amount of testing and hardening. And we often include uh, changes downstream to the upstream code that we believe are in the best interest of our customers. So we, we tend to closely follow the Kubernetes release cycle. However, we do uh, introduce our Kubernetes releases slightly behind the general availability of the Kubernetes releases from the community. If we look at this release, uh, you, you have Istio with Kubernetes. How does you know, uh, Istio with Kubernetes fits into the roadmap of Mirantis? Great question. So for us, Istio is a fundamental part of advanced Kubernetes uh, production usage. So when we think about the fabric that Kubernetes can provide for containerized applications across an entire enterprise in a variety of deployments, service mesh is one of the key components that can bring that all together and establish networking policies and additional policies around how those applications and services can interact with each other and with the infrastructure. If you look at the latest release of Kubernetes 1.18, you know, they have kind of improved support for Windows in the Kubernetes world. What is the situation of Docker E and Windows? Can you talk about that, especially in context of this release? So Docker Enterprise has supported Windows Server in the past with Docker Swarm. However, this is the first release that will include uh, uh, Windows Server support and Windows Container support with Kubernetes. Uh, that capability was introduced in Kubernetes 1.16. So as part of our inclusion of 1.17 in this release, we gained Windows support uh, for Kubernetes. However, we also did a significant amount of testing, validation, and hardening in order to make sure that the experience of our users was uh, as enterprise grade and resilient as it would be for any of the uh, other operating systems that we support. You know, we support uh, four Linux distributions as well as Windows now uh, with Kubernetes. Uh, we're very proud of that. We've had a tremendous partnership with Microsoft over the years uh, where the Docker engine is actually uh, re responsible for running 
Windows containers. Now adding Windows support for Kubernetes, we get the ability to orchestrate uh, applications and containers that are running in a heterogeneous environment spread across both Linux nodes as well as Windows nodes. But Docker used to work, I mean, not used to, Docker still works closely with Microsoft. What is the relationship uh, of uh, between Microsoft and Mirantis after this acquisition? Mirantis had a fantastic relationship with Microsoft prior to the acquisition. That has been a, uh, much more strengthened since the, the acquisition. Um, so with, with Docker Enterprise, there was significant traction around the Docker e Engine Enterprise uh, product, as well as uh, the, the Docker Trusted Registry, which is an outstanding complement to existing Microsoft Azure users. And so uh, we feel that there's a tremendous opportunity with Mirantis and Microsoft working together for the benefit of our mutual customers, both with technology as well as with services. So Mirantis has a tradition of providing open source expertise to the largest, most iconic brands around the world. And as part of that, we've developed tremendous Kubernetes expertise that we're currently using with our customers to help them in their journey towards modern applications and being able to help them set up DevOps workflows, DevOps tooling, uh, being able to refactor applications, legacy applications, and turn them into modern microservices-based applications, helping them even write code. Uh, and you know that services heritage has always been one of the strong suits with Mirantis where we're not only an open source technology company, but we also back that with the services heritage and expertise that large enterprises need to truly be successful in production with open source infrastructure at scale. And since uh, Docker is now part of you know, uh, Mirantis, and Mirantis is a you know, significant player in the Kubernetes space, uh, what are going to change with these uh, Docker releases? Uh, can you talk about either cadence? Can you talk about you know, uh, how you incorporate uh, Docker Enterprise with uh, Mirantis offerings? Can you talk a bit about all these different you know, uh, things? Docker Enterprise represents the core of our offering, certainly for containers and for Kubernetes. And we've introduced a quarterly cadence to our release cycles. We're actually doing monthly shippable builds as part of our agile software development lifecycle and choosing to release those on a quarterly basis where we've rolled up um, many of the capabilities that we've introduced. So we have a roadmap that was developed shortly after the acquisition of the Docker Enterprise business and our combined team has been working on that roadmap and the execution of the individual releases ever since the acquisition. Uh, that was the first team that was integrated and they came together really quickly. We had complementary roadmaps, which we announced at the time of the acquisition. And um, you know, we're really excited about the other releases that we have planned for this year, not only Docker Enterprise 3.1. As Docker Enterprise Edition is kind of part of Mirantis now, what has been the customer feedback? Feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, so we, shortly after the acquisition, uh, met with a large number of the Docker Enterprise customers, as well as some longstanding Mirantis customers, and presented our shared roadmap, which we had already developed. And they were extremely enthusiastic about the capabilities that we were planning to introduce in a in a reasonable time frame for them, uh, specifically around multi-cluster management and some of the capabilities that we announced at last year's KubeCon in November uh, for Kubernetes clusters uh, that are continuously updated and managed as an entire fleet of clusters with uh, automated continuous updates. Dave, uh, thank you for uh, taking your time and uh, talking about uh, this release. Uh, uh, and I look forward to talking to you again at some point. Thank you.